I'll be talking about digital evangelism, and I'll try to, um, and I'm going in two different directions, basically. Uh, we'll talk about digital evangelism as an individual, and then also how we can do it as a ministry, as a church. So, let's just go. Next slide, please. All right, so what is digital evangelism? Digital evangelism is simply just sharing the gospel using to, uh, to people that are on digital uh, platforms, you know, using digital media. How many of us have a phone here? Okay, yeah, I mean, I should be asking how many of us do not have a phone? Because, I, <laughs> you know, my, my, I have three kids. We have two tabs at home that they share amongst themselves. So everybody now they has a tab. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Um, Next one. Yeah, okay, so next one. Yeah, so your mobile device gives you access to a massive mission field. Your mobile device is something that gives you access. And I wrote there that you should make it a daily practice. Make it a part of your life to evangelize on a daily basis. Because you use your phone every day. You know, I know some people that have blocked some of their parents on WhatsApp because of the constant forwarded as received messages that they get. You know, and so this has become a part of our life. Um, it's, it's obviously not the best when it comes to emotional and mental health, but whether we like it or not, that's the future of the world. That's the way the world is going. You know, I'm sure we have heard about the metaverse and all these other things. We have heard how, you know, people are working on neural links where you are thinking and devices are responding to you. You know, the metaverse is essentially augmented reality where people are able to interact with virtual people. So we want to have a meeting. All of us can be in this place, but we are not here physically. Our avatars are sitting here. Um, Craig Groeschel's church, the people that are, be, are behind the YouTube, uh, YouVersion Bible app, they have a church on the metaverse. They are doing baptisms on the metaverse. I know a church, you know, this guy has been around for a while, DJ Soto, he's a, he's a, he's a theologian, but he has this church called Virtual Reality Church, you know, and there are atheists that go to that church because they want to find out what are these people talking about. And some of these guys have actually gotten born again on these platforms. So, yes, I know that there's a lot of uh, concern about, you know, digital and all that. But the truth is that your phone gives you access to the world like we have never been before. Praise God. Let's go to the next slide. So, now, there are two ways that you can evangelize on your digital device. You can either do it as one-to-one, one -one, the same way I talk to one person, you know, and I, I can uh, engage the person with the gospel. So, you can do that on your DMs, instant messaging, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp Messenger, and all that. You know, or you can do it as broadcast, one to many. You know, that's the one you see. I used to live in Lagos at a point, and I remember one day while I was waiting for a BRT bus. So this man was preaching the gospel. You know, he was carrying his whatever, and he was just walking. Of course, I heard the first part of the scripture. I didn't hear the last part. Because, you know, he was just trying to cover as much ground as possible. So that is when we do broadcast. You are doing posts on your social media, you know, and all those kind of things. You can reach more than one person at the same time. You know, and it's a way to preach the gospel. Now, one of the things we need to know is that digital evangelism is not sharing those threatening messages that if you don't give your life to Christ now, you will go to hell. That's not evangelism, you know. <laughs> okay, you know. Second thing we also need to know is that digital evangelism is not essentially sharing money devotion with other people. You know, because, I mean, people do it. People feel a sense that, okay, I've shared, you know, this scripture. And I belong to several WhatsApp groups, you know, where... I see this kind of thing. So it's important that we, we know this. So what is essentially, let's go to the next slide. How do you evangelize with your phone? I will follow a three-step process. I got this from a website. I mean, it had been in my head, but this helped me to just uh, crystallize it. Three things. Pray. You connect. And then you respond. Prayer is the part that's between you and God. You know, and just like Pastor um, Ronke said earlier, it's about, let's go to the next slide. You start with prayer. You know, um, the Great Commission Movement Nigeria is doing something currently where they are trying to get, I think it's 10 million souls for Christ. And the emphasis is that whether on digital platform or physical platforms, you either pray to, I mean, preach the gospel to one person the entire month of May, or you preach to one person every week in May, or you preach to one person every day in May. So either way, at least you are doing one. You know, out of city. So it's important to start with prayer. You know, when I, when I drive out to take my children to school, I'm asking God, God, give me opportunities to, you know, interact with people. I'm praying personally that I'm in a relationship with God because just like she has said, you, sometimes the major challenge of sharing the gospel is that you don't know what to say. Then you're afraid that how will people respond to it? 
Are they going to smile? Is somebody going to shout at you and all that and all that? So it's important to spend time with God in prayer. Actually ask God as you are going out, God, are there people that I can meet, you know, on digital platforms? And I will explain some of these things. Ask for opportunities, you know. Ask that you will meet people that have problems, you know, on digital platforms. I've been on several WhatsApp groups. There was a WhatsApp group I was on that somebody mistakenly, the young man shared pornographic material on that group. You know, it was a business WhatsApp group. And everybody came hard on him, you know. And immediately I saw an opportunity. First response was, how can you share this? But then, I, I mean, because I'd been praying, I saw an opportunity that this guy probably has a problem with pornography, with masturbation. He needs help, you know. And so I went to go and private chat him. And we started talking. And I didn't even mention, he said, oh, you came to my... I said, no, I just wanted us to just talk, you know, and build a relationship with him. Because the truth is that if you don't start at that point, if you don't start with prayer, you know, God guiding you to the people that need help, you probably miss them. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so connect with people. You know, the best way to connect with people is to listen. One of the greatest challenges we have with preaching the gospel is that we, we go with our preconceived notions. So you see somebody that has dyed her hair or dyed his hair, and we conclude that this person is, you know. But it's important that you listen. If you listen to people, the truth is that it actually even gives a lot of people away. You know, show love to them. Show love to people that are unsaved. I saw a, there was a young lady that did a post. I'm not sure if it was saved then, but she did a post on Facebook that, ah, that she had just slept with her boyfriend and the guy has broken up with her and put it on Facebook, you know. And of course, in the comments, when you go to the comment section, everybody just started lambasting her. Whereas this was an opportunity for somebody, I mean, to help this person. Most of the time, these problems will come as disguised, I mean, um, these opportunities will come disguised as problems. So you will meet people that are in trouble. You meet people that are looking. I mean, if you go to Twitter, you see all kinds of people there. People that are sharing all kinds of things. Some of them are just catching crews. But the truth is that at the depth of their heart, some of them have problems. They're just looking for something to cover up with. You know, so be an example of believers. Be prepared to show love. I remember an experience. Let's go to the next slide. I remember an experience that I had, you know, on, I saw this guy. This guy, we used to be in secondary school together. And I suddenly noticed that he had done a gender change. You know, and he was always blasting God and was always abusing God, you know. And obviously, I mean, obvious, everybody, and you know the very self-righteous uh, uh, believers like some of us, you know. We just go there and the next one we start saying that you go to hell, you know, Jesus. I mean, as if God cannot fight for himself. <laughs> Praise God. You know, so it's important that, so eventually I did a private, and I just reminded him of our days in secondary school. And... Then I reached out to another person who had been an atheist but was not a Christian. That how do I reach out to this guy? And he said, see, just show him love. So on some occasions, the Holy Spirit will, will prompt you to say certain things to him. You know, then say it. But then the moment you see that he's beginning to fight back, just go back. I mean, it's like trying to reach a Muslim. The moment you're trying to preach to a Muslim, I want to start quoting scriptures. Both of you are not even on common ground. So they are going to fight you. You know, so it's important that you are, you, you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You know, problems will come, I mean, opportunities will come disguised as problems. Um, let's go. Okay, so start conversations with people, and I will explain some of these things. Now, it's better to ask questions. That it, when you ask questions to people, people have a, there's a way that it just makes them want to answer. It leaves an open loop. So when you ask a question, so I have, there are a few questions, and I will show you some of those questions. You can use videos, you know, they can be conversation starters. Use videos, drop a video. There's a video I saw, I, I think I put the link here. Jesus film. How many people have seen Jesus film before? Jesus film. Okay, so they have these conversation starter videos that are just short videos. So there's this video called Control Z. It's a story about a guy. A story about a guy that is in his office and they are trying to do certain things. And all of a sudden, his um, um, keyboard had a problem. And you notice that every time you did Control Z, the thing reversed what was happening in the office physically. So he hated his job and wanted to leave the job, you know. And by the time he, he so he went to the, um, his um, boss's office and the guy always throws a football at them when he comes to the office. So he took his football and threw it at the guy and started saying all kinds of things about the guy. Not knowing that the guy was on the phone with his father who owned the company. By the time he was returning to his desk, low and control Z, the, clean, the technician had been on the desk and was repairing the, the, <laughs> the keyboard. So he did control Z several times and nothing could happen. You know, and so now when you send that video out, there are now questions that, okay, what in your life would you like to redo? You know, and it makes people begin to open up. I, I, there's a, I mean, the, the, 
Great Commission Movement group that I'm on, somebody shared a testimony of a Muslim that she shared this with. You know, and then he started talking about how you can redo your life. How God can come into this picture and change everything about you. And the person got saved. And these are, this is somebody that they have not seen physically. These are WhatsApp chats. So it's important that you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit and you are paying attention. I mean, I have done certain things. For example, I'm chatting with somebody and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to give me a word for that person. You know, I mean, it's called prophetic evangelism. So you are giving a word of knowledge to somebody you have never met before. So there was this lady that we were talking and I just sent that, ah, that I feel that the issue of marriage that you are struggling with, that God will sort it out. And she was like, wow, how did I know that she wanted, she was trying to get married? You know, and that brought us into a relationship. Eventually, I mean, we saw physically. You know, so it's important that we are paying attention. When we see things like that, when we see people sharing things online, you see somebody share that he's homosexual, or he, I mean, he, he, there are people that need help. You know, and those problems are disguised. And you can, like I said earlier, this, I mean, digital evangelism, uh, digital platforms are wide. All of us belong to groups that have people in different nations, you know, all across the world. And so there are opportunities for us to be able to share the gospel. Um, next slide. So there are a few helpful apps that you can use. You know, like I said earlier, the greatest challenge we have is how do I, share, how do I start this conversation? If you go to, um, next slide. There's this app called God Tools. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to, if there's a way you can zoom it in a little bit. But if you go to Play Store, you see this app, God Tools app. You know, in the God Tools app, there are conversation starters. There are several tools for sharing the gospel. And some of these things are just graphics that you can share with people or you can start talking to them about. If you go to the Play Store, it's God Tools. It's very, very uh, light app. You can, and then it has lots of videos. It even shows you ways that you can start sharing the gospel with people physically or digitally. You know, there's nobody here that doesn't like a story. There's nobody here that doesn't like watching videos. Once the video is exciting. Um, the Great Commission Movement did something last year. Was it, was it during COVID now? When it was Ramadan season. They did a video that, you know, um, started with Abraham taking Isaac to go and slaughter him. Because that's the reason for Elia. You know, so he gets there. And then usually Muslims end at that point. You know, so he wanted to kill him and then there was a ram that was replaced. And then the question was, do you really know the significance of this lamb that was replaced? You know, and of course, most, of, most people do not know. And so that starts a conversation. And then you can present the gospel to them in such a way that it's different from the same way where we normally do it. That the moment they see you come, they already know you are coming. You know, how many people have ever wanted to preach to somebody or you are trying to preach to somebody and the person blocks you or WhatsApp? <laughs> you know, so most of the time it's really, I mean, yes, there are some people that are very obnoxious. They don't want anything like that. But the truth is that if you come from a different angle, a different perspective, you will definitely get their attention. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so that... There's three things I want us to do right now as we are leaving this place. I want you to take action. Set a goal for yourself. That in this month of May, I will share the gospel with at least one person. That's the minimum we can do. You know, one of the beauties of using digital devices to preach the gospel is that it gives you that anonymity. I mean, I've seen people that we are not, I mean, these are people that you change their diapers and they are greeting you on WhatsApp. Sup? You know, and you know that, you know, but that is because of that sense that I'm hiding behind a, a keypad. So there's nothing I can't say. Same way you can, if you have a Muslim friend, you can share the gospel with the person. You can start with this conversation starters. If you go to that God Tools app, there are lots of questions. Let me see if I can read one or two of those questions out here. I mean, for example, that video that was shown, you ask somebody what in your life would you like to redo you know i mean it's a question that kind of addresses that sense of regret about what you are doing in your life or things that you are doing in your life that you love god to change and there are many questions you can start with even asking questions about the movies that they like and the truth is that if you know god's word very well there's no movie that you cannot switch in any way to be applied whether it's avengers or whether it's spider-man i mean whatever you know, I mean, in fact, the fact that we're even having superhero movies make it a lot easier for us to talk about the supernatural. You know, and if, you, if you've also observed, you notice that there are a lot of horror movies that are coming out now. A lot. It's because people are just interested 
in those kind of things. So, okay, so let me read some of these conversation starters here, some of these questions. So, questions about spirituality. What have you learned most about yourself and the world in the last couple of months? Things like the end times. Everybody is concerned about the end of the world. You know, what's your view about the end of the world? If you ask on a WhatsApp group, people, you will see all kinds of different views. And they will give you opportunities and openings for you to be able to talk to people about the gospel. You can ask about people's, I mean, let me see uh, here. Okay. Family, what values from your childhood do you want to pass to your kids? These are harmless questions that can start a conversation with people and make it easy for you to be able to communicate the gospel to them. Like I said, please get this God Tools app. It's very good. There's also the four spiritual laws on it, you know, with pictures. Four spiritual laws. I've known four spiritual laws since way, way back. Uh, scripture union kind of teachings, you know. Um, there's another one called the four, the four.com. It shows four simple images. One, I think it's a, um, okay. So essentially, okay, so one, one is, divide, is a divided sign. It shows that we are separate from God. There's one that has the cross sign. You know, and then it's just, just four simple images that you can use to just share the gospel very quickly. You know, and you can just start by asking a simple question. What do you think this divided means? I mean, it's a harmless question that can start you on a journey to share many things. Praise God. So like I said earlier, make up your mind that you're going to share the gospel with people. You know, there's the, there's the Roman road of salvation too. Where it's just a series of scriptures in Romans that talk about how we fell from sin to how we can be saved. Praise God. All right, then write it down. Tell somebody about it. Be accountable to someone that this is what I've decided to do. And then pray. You'll be shocked when you pray how easy it is people respond to the gospel. I mean, some, just like Pastor Ronke said earlier, some people think that because they go to church, they are saved. It's a question you can ask. You know, ask somebody. And if you are scared that your colleague at work, you know, start with some of these videos. Send the video. After a few days, ask Tell the person that I want to send you a couple of videos. I want to send you a video. I'm going to ask for your feedback much later. That's something that you can ask. You know, and by the time you send it, two or three days after, after you have prayed, obviously, ask the person, what do you think about this video? What are your thoughts about this? Praise God. All right, so that covers for um, digital evangelism for individuals. So as an individual, you should be evangelizing. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. So, I want to just talk about this as ministries, churches, whether you're also an individual minister. Next slide. So, I have this five-step framework that I came up with and I wrote in this book, you know, that guides through strategy, um, content, publishing, community management, and monitoring and measurement. I will explain. I can't go through everything, but I'll talk about the first one, which is really the most important. Let's go to the next slide, please. So effective digital ministry and evangelism starts with the right strategy. You need to, most people just jump on digital media and start posting. Most, I mean, most churches in Nigeria, most ministries in Nigeria, what we do is just open a Facebook page and start streaming our, our meetings. You know, but it's important to understand that these platforms are not one-way streets like radio. You know, they are not a sort of aggressive. If you do a post on Facebook, if somebody disagrees with you, they will respond. The best you can do is either block their number or make it only within a group of people. So it's important. There are four questions that you should ask. And I'll run through them quickly. Why are you on digital media? Why are, why, what's your, what are your goals? You know, it could simply mean that you want to get more people saved. And I, I mean, what are the outcomes that you are looking out for? That makes it easy for you to measure and to guide your activities. Second question is, who is your target audience? Who are the people that you are sent to? Unlike um, physical evangelism, where you're doing physically, when you're doing digital evangelism, you can't start with general. You, can't, you are not sent to everybody. Because the way the platforms are designed, they're designed such that interests, people with similar interests gather together. If you go to Facebook now, you'll be shocked that you see people that love cooking eggs. There are groups, massive groups, of hundreds of thousands of people that love eggs. You know, people that love pit bulls. People that love Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> Praise God. You know, so it's important. It's important that you're able to break this down. What's, what's their age? What's their spiritual journey? The way you preach to somebody that is saved, that has backsliding, it's not the same way you preach to somebody that doesn't, that is of another faith. 
I don't know if you are getting my point. The approach is going to be... So you need to be sure what it is that you are doing. If not, you'll be trying to reach everybody and you'll not be reaching anybody. Then, their location, do, does their location matter? If there are people that you are trying to attract to church physically, then they should be within a particular radius. You know, I mean, if you are trying to reach somebody at the world and you want him to be coming here, you've already created some problem. Praise God. All right. Third one is your um, what? What are you going to share on digital platforms? You know, and it's important... I mean, this is, this is something I've discovered. Most churches, we do not have our members following our social media accounts. Amen? You know. <laughs> okay, so the reason is this. This is my personal discovery. This is an interaction with people. I discovered that people don't, there's first of all, that see me finish. So I'm in church on Sunday. Why do I want to listen to Pastor Femi's message again? I don't know. If I, and that's what we do. We share the live stream again. But I was in church. So there's no need for me to go and watch the live stream. You know? So we need to change. We need to be very creative with our content. That's one. We need to change the content in such a way. People are on social media platforms to just bite-size information and get out. They are not there to marry. They are not there. To, I mean, it's like the first. Like I always jokingly say, if you are, if, I mean, um, all my sisters are married. But if one of my sisters entered a car from Challenge and then got to um, Olodo where we used to stay. And asks me and tells me that I've, talk about, I've met somebody in the bus today. We're getting married tomorrow. You know that will cost is cost for Allah. You know. So that's the same thing. When you meet somebody on social media and you have not built a relationship with the person, and you want the person to give a full commitment to start coming to church every Sunday, you're asking for too much. Social media is supposed to be a window for you to be able to drag them enough to catch their attention enough to want to find out more. You know, so, I mean, I, I always say this. Our graphics, for example, midweek service graphics, sometimes is designed mostly for people that are church members. It's a reminder for us to come to church. If I give that to somebody that is not my church member or somebody that is not saved, you can't bring him to church. So we're going to have to change the way we do our content. So that if we're thinking of attracting people, there's a friend of mine that did something on, on um, Twitter a couple of years ago. He did this design. He was doing the Ramadan period. And he wanted us to begin to pray for Muslims to get saved. So he did this design that had some Arabic-related kind of designs. And the thing, in three hours, was getting up to 100,000 plus impressions. Because he did something that looked different. The moment you do a design for church, we know it. You know? And so you are not trying to invite somebody that is already averse to church with all the bad press that we are getting in Nigeria. You know, already, the person already knows. In fact, most of the time, when you are scrolling through Facebook and you see it, even if it's your church, whatever, you just scroll past. Because you are used to it. You know, so it's important that we are more creative. You know, we, the idea of content is to connect with people and build trust with them. The idea of content is to communicate and share your message, you know, but also to create value. And what we think is valuable is not what our audience thinks is valuable. You know, we know that they need to be saved. But just like uh, Pastor Roque was saying, I mean, when you go to a brother and you're trying to preach to somebody, as far as she's concerned, it's the money she's going to use to eat that day that is her concern. So any other thing that I'm saying, even if, you, even if she needs to be saved, she's not going to listen to you. So it's important to put their value first. You know, there's nothing wrong. I know this may sound a little bit of spiritual, but there's nothing wrong with us coming up with skits and videos that can engage people. There's a video I saw on that Jesus Film website where there's a guy trying to fix a puzzle. He has fixed all the other pieces, just one more piece. The moment he was trying to touch that last piece, the background of his entire house was black and white. The moment he touched that piece, everything became colored, and he ran away. You know? And he did that for like a few minutes. He wore gloves to try and touch it so that it still happened like that. Eventually, when he fixed it, he tore that little piece, and he just wanted, and then he placed that puzzle thing in a frame with the missing piece. He liked his life like that. You know? And so, if you share that kind of video, if you share that kind of thing on social media, people will begin to ask questions. Some of the times when we share stuff, I mean, I've seen this many times, when I do posts on social media, the only ones that really get engagement are when you pray and you ask people to say amen in the comments. And then you now see the amen, 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 amen. You know? So, we need to begin to change the way we are structuring our content. If we are thinking of attracting people. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So, um, please, let's back up a little bit. To, okay, all right. Let me go from here. Let me go from here. It's fine. So, how many people know Street Church? Street Church, the black and yellow guys. Now, 
I checked, as at the time I, I did this slide, um, when I checked, was um, June. Between February and June, they grew from, I think, maybe 16 or maybe 10,000 or 2,000 followers, I can't remember, to over 78,000. Why? Everybody has this assumption that today's generation does not like the word of God. Amen? You know, so we feel that when you share the word, people are not listening. But then these guys brought the word of God in a way that young people, so they have this, whatever, where they did these guys. And then they will put a scripture under it, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14. If you, are a born, if you have been born again for a while, you know, you ask, how can we read these guys be 2 Corinthians? You will check. If you are a young person that doesn't know what 2 Corinthians is, you look at where these guys, you will be attracted and you will be forced to check the scripture. And I saw a comment on their Twitter page. Somebody said that if this is how the Bible is written, in three months, you will finish reading the Bible. You know, so because it suddenly just connects with them. So it's important for us to do that. Begin to think about people, you know, that we're trying to reach. Um, there's this video too by God Life on Facebook. They did a video ad, sponsored video ad. And the question on that ad is, what is your purpose? You know, and they just did a very less than one minute video ad. And they sponsored it. And of course, targeted people. For example, I mean, I have seen Facebook ads targeted to me that are from Muslims. Islamic groups, Yes. And when I check the analysis, I see that they are targeting people that live in Nigeria that are between certain ages. We can do the same. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so there's something I did with uh, Vancouver Church recently towards Easter. You know, we, did, we ran ads for them. And unfortunately, it was very short. We just had four days to run the ads. We spent about 1,000 Naira every day running the ads. And we were able to get... Um, we reached 354 people with less than 5,000 naira. You know, we were able to get 15 people to click on the ad, and eventually two people came to church. We spending less than 5,000 naira, and that was even because I'm not familiar with that terrain. I the targeting was so wide, so we weren't targeting. So that some of these people came from way, 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 way far away from the place. So imagine if it was a little bit more close circuited. And what did I ask? I mean, I just asked Pastor Sami to do a video inviting people to come and have a nice time based on the Easter fiesta that they were doing, you know. And there's this, there was a script that they followed and people started engaging. So it's possible for us to do this. Can we target people that are not saved, get a video of evangelism and target it to them? Yourself on your own, you can spend 5,000 naira and do this. And people will be saved. People will come to your, um, to your messenger I begin to ask you questions. There's another one that I've seen a church do. I'm trying to uh, see how we can do it for our, our own uh, church. You know, where you ask people that, how can I pray for you? I mean, they will send you a message. And then you do a voice recorded message praying for that person with their name. There's nothing that makes people feel warm and accepted like that. Praise God. You know, so it's something that we can do. Finally, let's go to the last slide. Last slide. All right. So, what are the, where are the platforms that are going to do some of these things? You know, not all social media platforms are created equal. That's one thing that we need to know. Secondly, the way our Facebook will be should not be the way our Instagram should be. Because they are reaching different audiences. You know? So, I mean, um, I, I don't want to mention the name of the church, but there's, when a church is targeting other believers, there are certain things that you put out. So, I can put out snippets of messages. Because believers can resonate with that. But if I'm trying to target unbelievers, maybe people that have problems in their marriages. For example, during COVID, there was a church in the UK that did something on mental health, a webinar on mental health. Unbelievers can come to that. When I used to be in Methodist, it was difficult to invite people to church. You know, except on harvest days. Where I know that we we'll sing and dance and we we'll eat. You know, <laughs> because, I mean, most of the messages were not targeted towards young people. So it was difficult to invite people to church. But imagine we have a, um, a webinar that talks about mental health and how it can be. And you ask people to sign up on your website, you know, and they get an email or they get a video. That explain, they get access to that webinar and they are really blessed. It can be a bridge to you getting to them. Right now, I mean, Facebook is pushing reels, you know, whether on Facebook or, or, or Instagram. There are opportunities to get rich. There are things you can do as a church. There are things you can do as an individual that can get people. Five books that I read, five things I do in the morning to make my life better. Three ways Jesus has transformed me. There's this lady, Ariel, 
Fitzgerald. I don't know if some of us know her. She's the one that did one song. Valentine is coming. Where is, she does this conversation where she's like she's talking to God. She's the same person that is doing it. A lot of young people follow her because they can find that she's talking the authentic issues that they are having. So, I mean, we don't necessarily have to do those same things. But because we belong to a creative God, I'm sure that there are creative ideas that we can deploy. So it's important that we know that we need to begin to design these platforms for. In our church, I've discovered that, for example, our Facebook pages have people that are church members, people that come to church regularly. Our Instagram are people that don't come to church. So that means what we share on Facebook is not what we should be sharing on Instagram. Because we are trying to reach a totally different audience. They are younger. Most of the other people on our Facebook group are much older. So it's important that we really get to uh, do all this. And I believe that God will help us in Jesus' name.